uh, good evening uh, everyone namaste thanks a lot for uh, joining this webinar thanks to meti startup hub and nascom for uh, organizing this um, a little bit of housekeeping if uh, any of you feel that the screen is struck maybe if you can refresh the browser once it should work fine uh, so let's get started a uh, little bit about me myself prashant and i head the uh, product management at zoho finance suite of products and today i am going to talk about digital finance and how a finance function within an organization can reimagine itself to be a strategic partner within the company so here's a quick look at the agenda in the very first section i'm going to talk about a uh, way to assess where you are in your digital journey in the second section i'll walk you through uh, some of the key characteristics that distinguish digital finance from traditional finance in the third section i will show you how technologies like cloud and ai can be adopted within the finance function and you can realize tangible results soon uh, in the final section i'll share what i envisage a modern finance should look like so that the finance can play a strategic role in the organization so here we go so what is digital finance maybe we can just step back and ask ourselves what is digital so digi the word digital means different things for different people and uh, uh, does it mean that uh, uh, does it mean adoption of one or more of these technologies like say cloud or ai or ml blockchain or robotic process automation uh, for sure some of these uh, technologies have been really transformational for example uh cloud has been great in uh, helping us during this pandemic AI and ml has is well entrenched in the ecosystem today there's a lot of brilliant things that are happening in fintech and of course there are a lot of buzzwords that come and go and some of them are destined to the scrap heap of fact but for me right digital means it's more of a philosophical thing than just a technology or rather an adoption of a single piece of technology it's an evolution it's a three stage process is how i would define it at the first stage you have digitization here we are primarily talking about as the word implies right converting all bits of paper to bytes in your computer basically going paperless and uh, ensuring that all information is available in your computers and accessible from anywhere so the focus here is on information and not process so uh, let me give you a few examples suppose you are sending invoices to your clients if you are sending them as a paper invoice you haven't digitized your accounts receivable process so instead if you are sending it through as a pdf or through online or allowing your customers to download through a self service portal then you have digitized your accounts receivable process similarly on the accounts payable front if you are allowing your suppliers to upload invoices and uh, or send them through an email then you have digitized your accounts payable process and uh, uh, let's take your employees if uh, you avoid uh, you don't ask your employees to queue up at the finance desk or a hr desk for uh, filling of forms you allow them to uh, fill in through a portal then you have digitized a part of your employee experience or let's take a newspaper uh, publication if, if the newspaper allows its readers to download a pdf copy Uh, instead of just uh, purchasing a physical copy then they have digitized that part of the process so at the next stage right once you have digitized uh, the next stage is digitalization here we move beyond just information 
the focus is on the process so uh, sticking to the same examples instead of uh, allowing your customers to receive invoices online if you allow them to pay online and that payment is automatically reflected in your back end systems then you have digitalized your accounts receivable process instead of just allowing your suppliers to send you their uh, bills or invoices online if you have automation and technology in place that can extract information from those documents uh, record it in your system and route it through an automated workflow then you have digitalized your accounts payable process now uh, let's go back to the newspaper example if the newspaper instead of just allowing to a download of their pdf copy of their uh, of their publication if they allow their readers to subscribe and pay online they have digitalized their checkout process so here the focus is goes beyond information and the aim is for complete automation and the way you evaluate whether this this is successful or not is how much of your resources you are able to deploy for more value added tasks instead of manual manual tasks so the key is uh, the, the key is process efficiency and the final stage is digital transformation here once you have digitized and digitalized here we have to ask ourselves whether we are able to respond to market needs quicker whether we are able to adopt to new business models whether based on the customer profile and customer performance we are able to quickly realign ourselves or uh, drive uh, take up uh, take a different pivot strategic pivots so the focus here should be on adopting a completely different business model and respond to changing market needs uh, sticking to the newspaper example if the newspaper allows its readers to not just read online but if they are able to uh, provide a different form of con content uh, along with say textual content they allow the content to be interspersed with video and audio if they allow multiple subscription plans and uh, maybe a higher end they, they are able to provide a premium plan where readers can interact with their top journalists or if they allow purchase of uh, a single article that's again changing their business model so basically here the newspaper has used technology to transform their business model so so i think we know how to assess where we are in our digital journey so if we are, the, the question is if we are able to adopt to newer business models using technologies then we have digitally transformed our business now how how does digital finance different from traditional finance when when we think about finance right typically reports like balance sheet uh, profit and loss statement cash flow statement these things come to mind uh, and uh, the finance uh, department led by the cfo or financial director is responsible for ensuring that these reports are generated on time and they are they adhere to standards like ifrs or gap but if we think through right much of what these reports show are little backward looking in nature they tell you how a business has performed in the recent past however today we have technology that can glean insights from multiple departments within an organization and provide you with forward looking metrics uh, in real time and uh, helping you with leading indicators telling you how the business is going to perform in the near future 
So basically, you can perform predictive analytics on the data instead of dis descriptive analytics on past data. So this fundamentally arms the finance team with information, helping them to be a driver of the business change. Yeah. And continuing with the same point, right? So then today, uh, you have businesses, uh, uh, there's multiple industries are being disrupted uh, as the pandemic has reinforced. In the past 20, 30 years, we would have seen a uh, lot of industries uh, change the way they have to serve their customers. Newer, newer technologies uh, forces business model changes. So that would mean the finance team also has to uh, ensure that the business is future ready and sustainable rather than just focus on a quarterly report or something like that. So <coughs> sorry. So there are two orthogonal challenges here. Companies must protect themselves from uh, uh, from challenges to their core activities, but concurrently continue to innovate and grow. So you cannot rely on today's competitive advantage for tomorrow's success. So it is imperative that strategies are devised, assuming that changes continually happen. So we, we would have seen uh, preferences of customers change, a barrier entries to barrier are lowered, uh, supply chain channels are disintermediated. So it's a, the, the companies look for the finance team to ensure that the business is sustainable in the future. And that being the case, the finance team led by the CFO and the finance directors have to help in identifying new areas of growth. And uh, the perception that finance has is they are uh, typically no sayers. Uh, they don't uh, so easily sign off on the check for uh, newer initiatives, but that perception has to change. Uh, a good finance team or good CFO today is viewed as someone who constantly encourages new avenues of growth. So it is given that today companies need to be fast uh, and while companies need to think long term, they need to execute on the short term. That would mean companies have to adopt lean practices and finance team has to realign themselves uh, for shorter lead times identify uh, and maybe purge practices that uh, that go against this leanness. So, uh, sorry. Uh, and uh, typically, right, in the old world, uh, old fashioned way of uh, finance, everything was driven by plans and milestones to control and manage risks. However, in the digital world, where the focus is on leanness, outcomes take precedence over plans and milestones. Uh, and the funds should be channelized to ensure that uh, business is able to experiment with the experiment and the outcomes are tested and outcomes cannot be predetermined. So as you continuously keep testing various outcomes that uh, tells the strategic rationale behind that. And the question, right question to ask is, uh, are we generating positive outcomes quickly instead of are all tasks and milestones completed? And a traditional way of uh, looking at capital deployment is uh, typically based on business cases prepared well in advance. Uh, uh, this is uh, generally subject to great uncertainty and does not provide flexibility to quickly adapt to changes, which is required for, a com for companies that are looking to do small, small experiments and respond to changing market needs. So uh, today, finance can break down initiatives to smaller atomic units and manage the risk. And the outputs of these units can be measured then and decide if these initiatives uh, can be funded. Furthermore, Budgeting, right? Typically, it's uh, when it's based on siloed activities is also old style. 
uh, it was respond uh, for example most of the budgeting that was the old fashioned way of doing it is set up a separate budget for marketing set up a separate budget for each of the departments but today organizational practices are based on cross functional activities which are more widely representative of the company the finance team must foster transparency and measure performance cutting across traditional organization boundaries and the finance team should take advantage of the changing cost structure uh, today much of the cost can be operationalized or expensed instead of capitalized uh, for example uh, investment in technology or investment in servers that was typically a fixed cost based on plans that are decided well in advance today you can pay for your usage as and when you go as and when you use and uh, in underlying infrastructure is automatically provisionalized so uh, there's a change in cost structure and finance has to take advantage of this yeah. and even compliance right the systems that are designed for compliance uh, need to keep in mind that compliance are uh, also are changing somewhere uh, somewhere some uh, any uh, somewhere in the world there is a law that changes the the gdpr model privacy by design is the best one to adopt uh, you have to build in controls that meet privacy and compliance objectives in a future oriented manner okay so uh, a quick recap of the first two sections uh, i in the first section i spoke about how to uh, assess where you are in your digital journey um, in the second section i talked about some of the key characteristics that differentiate traditional finance and finance in the digital world uh, this section i'm going to focus on specific areas of finance that where you can adopt technologies like cloud and ai and realize tangible gains so what are the key areas of finance today the finance right function focuses on uh, is responsible for these three c's cost control and compliance and let's take cost the very adoption of cloud based technologies right can represent a potential cost savings of 30% over their on premise equivalents uh, at zoho we have realized a 75% reduction in our it budget uh, even accounting for the fact that we ourselves pay for zoho uh, so that said what are the specific functions within finance that we need to look into let's take accounts payable so there's a iofm report that says over 84% of the time ap staff the accounts payable staff spend on invoice processing they spend 84% of their time just leaving 16% for more productive activities so this is a area ripe for disruption so with adoption of cloud and ai you can automate repetitive tasks and uh, eliminate much of the data entry so uh, ai uh, tools like ocr and all can extract information from documents the documents can be routed for approval and exception handling uh, and with the the supplier buyer ecosystem and all coming up we can have a financial document exchange which can completely eliminate ap invoice entry at and furthermore operational efficiency can be increased where ai can train itself to recognize documents and perform the necessary tasks for example ai can learn the supplier to whom a po should be routed and send it across automatically and that's on the accounts payable part now even on the payments front right today that can there's a lot of operational efficiency you can realize uh, for example you can today you can pay your suppliers directly from your accounting and uh, erp system so this uh, 
this uh, you, with this you don't need to juggle between multiple systems and all the context about whom you whom you need to pay how much you need to pay is available right in your erp and you can pay directly from them yeah and next is the ar part the accounts receivable uh, and uh, an average organization can reduce its trapped cash by nearly 33% simply by reducing dso by 5 days dso is day sales outstanding so as these stats show an automated system can reduce 20% in day sales outstanding 25% in past due receivables and 15 to 20% in bad debt reserves so it is imperative that constantly think about solutions that can help you collect money faster and better so here are some of the ways maybe you can provide a self service portal for your customers um, provide multiple payment options so that you are able to collect it, collect money faster may remove the friction at the customer end automate the payment reminders um, so that you nudge your customers to pay on time thereby improving your cash flow or even chase late paying customers so and the next function that you need to look into is travel and expense uh, travel is uh, taboo now because of the pandemic but uh, i believe the human urge to travel and meet each other uh, and there is and why is this an uh, important function that you need to look out, look into when you talk about managing cost uh, it's the second biggest expenditure of the payroll and it's the single largest variable expenditure and uh, but then should we reduce travel or uh, should we optimize the travel related costs so typically a lot of companies when they approach this part right last year we had 100 people traveling this year maybe we cannot spend so much so we'll just send 50 people so maybe that's not the right way to look into things because multiple studies show that the total sales return on each dollar invested in travel is 10 to 15 dollars and and there uh, there are studies that show face to face interaction increases the chance of uh, Uh, convert converting prospects into paying customer by 50 50% so why should you consider a travel and expense solution and it helps in multiple ways one is from an organization perspective uh, uh, it uh, removes a lot of uh, paper declutters your uh, desk um, and uh, it automatically captures Uh, all the expenditure and post it in your accounting system so that's a administrative convenience from an employee expensive uh, employee experience part of you it uh, uh, nudges your employees to submit their reports record the expenditures uh, that are that they incur on behalf of the company on time um, so and uh, it helps you optimize for right kind of travel as this example shows uh, global company it they cut their travel expenses from around 750 million dollars to 350 million dollars just by tracking the purpose of expense and they in, incorporated additional controls for internal travel so in a nutshell what's happening is you discard the shoe box discard declutter your desk and have everything in a nice organized format in your uh, system Uh, and furthermore uh, most travel happens for sales reasons you have a uh, lot of sales guys have to travel and sales guys live in their crm system so it makes sense for these two systems to talk together and from a finance perspective it can give a completely new dimension to your spend you can understand how much money is being spent on to acquire new customers and whether the spend is happening in the right places are the are, is the money going to the right sales opportunities yeah 
So the next major area of, of focus for the for the finance team is compliance. So as I mentioned earlier, right, the GDPR model of privacy by design is the model that's going to be uh, embraced going forward. So you know, the system should be system should be designed in such a way that uh, it, it the compliance part is future oriented. Assume that something or, or the other is going to change, be it laws or privacy laws, the way we handle customers' data. So um, uh, that's that's the that's the that would be the way to go. And moving beyond privacy, right? It's uh, there are other act, uh, other parts of compliance like tax and uh, policy. If you take tax or uh, or payroll when when you open a new office in another jurisdiction so the local tax applies you, you cannot keep on investing in new systems to ensure that you comply with uh, newer uh, the, the, ta the respective tax laws your existing system should scale to accommodate the tax laws regardless of where your organization is located and Adopting this kind of a system minimizes the maintenance cost. And furthermore, what it does is it audit proves your AR and AP platforms, uh, obviating the need to keep on checking if the right kind of taxes applied on the right kind of business. So the taxes are applied based on where your customer is located, where your business is located. Uh, so there are multiple factors who the customer is. Uh, there are regions where services are not tax taxed there are regions where uh, some of the goods are not taxed so there are multiple uh, rules that come into play so the cloud based systems right uh, use apis for validating all these and uh, and the right kind of system can ensure that you are always compliant as an example when india moved to a new tax law in uh, 2017 uh, and the multitude of taxes in the form of VAT and central sales tax and all were replaced by GST in 2017. So we changed the underlying systems to uh, obviously accommodate uh, GST and our customers uh, didn't do much. So they were uh, ready for the new GST. But for if, uh, if, a, if a business has been on uh, on-premise solutions. They had to either have their vendors come to their office and update it, or they had to download their patches. And uh, the last few years, uh, especially for various reasons, right, the tax laws are changing far more than they have ever been. For example, Brexit happened. Then again, the systems have to change to accommodate these changes. And <laughs> There's a question of policy compliance. For example, uh, here we are talking as an example, FCA, FCPA compliance, FCPA's Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. Uh, it's applicable for US companies. Say you attend an event and you entertain some attendees. Your system should record who are the attendees and uh, what for they have been entertained, what's the expenditure uh, so that in future, if there is an audit that comes up, you are able to pull up these records. And a lot of fraud can happen here. Systems should be able to automatically detect those, detect that fraud. And some of that can be unintentional too. So, and the third part, third part where the finance plays a critical role apart from cost and compliance is control. Here, I'm talking about strategic control so let's take any business initiative um, any company that wants to uh, say a transform a part of their business or invest in a new initiative uh, much of the discussion right the finance team is not involved usually the finance team is called for discussions they just get into the sidelines to either uh, sign a check or uh, they, they they are brought into the party much later uh, this is a little unfortunate 
considering that the finance team can provide some valuable insights. Uh, let's assume a, a, a division head decides to invest in a transformation. Uh, then now if and he claims that it's the, the transformation can realize around 100 million dollars in uh, uh, 100 million dollars in additional growth. Now if the industry now is 200 million dollars and this is just 100 million dollars, this is not a great initiative. Uh, or uh, this doesn't make the cut. Or one is to establish the financial baseline. You need to have the finance team involved much earlier in the discussion. And how do you measure if the particular initiative creates value? Let's take an example of a sales head who wants to hire uh, or who has hired hundred people, uh, hundred salespeople and claims that the revenue has gone up because of this hiring now the revenue might have gone up but if the operation operating margin is so low the additional revenue doesn't make sense then this particular initiative has not created value so to establish a baseline to measure if that initiative creates value you need to involve the finance team much earlier in any kind of transformation the business undergoes. And finally, how do you ensure that a particular uh, benefits of an initiative reach the bottom line? Here again, the finance team can provide valuable inputs. Um, uh, an initiative might show up on your profit and loss, but it, it, uh, it may not have generated the uh, adequate cash for that. Or there could be non-cash things, like for example, changes in your working capital, which are not reflected in your P&L, but have to provide great benefits for the business. So these kinds of in insights, the finance team can provide uh, invaluable inputs. And this is possible today because there's firehose of information available uh, through various sources and that could be contextualized. And allowing the finance team to own the analytics part to gain operational control over the various aspects of business. So a quick recap. In the first section, I spoke about how to assess where your business, in on your business is on your digital journey. In the next section, I gave you a few uh, characteristics that differentiates traditional finance and digital finance. The third section, uh, I spoke about the various aspects of finance like cost control and uh, uh, compliance where adoption of technology can ensure that great results uh, can be realized soon. And this is the final section and I'm going to share my perspective of what a modern finance should look like. A modern finance function should be connected. It should be collaborative, should be contextual, and should be continuous. And last but not least, customer driven. So what do we mean when we say finance has to be connected? The finance team shouldn't work in silo. So the CFO is the CFO of not, not just the finance team, but the CFO of the entire organization. And the systems, the finance systems, right, they have to ensure that they are connected upstream to various external parties and downstream to various other systems. Let's take banks. Banks play a very, very critical role today. And we no longer keep cash under our pillow, correct? So all the money the business generates is in the banks and uh, you pay your supplier through a bank account, you uh, receive uh, money into your bank account. So it's very, very important to uh, ensure that banking is an integral part of your financial systems. And 
uh, as an example at Zoho, right, we have partnered with banks like ICICI, Standard Chartered, uh, and DRX Bank. For example, UAE, we have a partnership with Mashrit, where uh, you can, where we ensure that a lot of banking transactions are executed right from your existing financial systems. You don't need to juggle between multiple systems. And banks are one major player. And then the tax authorities. Are, obviously, we uh, all companies pay taxes. Uh, they are, uh, uh, and there is a uh, recognized tax authority in each jurisdiction. And companies need to continually find ways to ensure that the systems with the tax authorities uh, work seamlessly and to keep pushing the envelope to ensure that this part of your process is completely streamlined. Uh, and the third thing is about suppliers. Suppliers are an important part of your ecosystem. Unless you are a very, very small company, you have a set of suppliers whom you procure regularly goods from. Now, let's take a, an example of uh, an invoice that a supplier sends you. Now, his accounts receivable invoice is your accounts payable invoice. Uh, now, you need to ensure that there is a kind of system or a financial document exchange where the supplier can upload that or send their transactions to and you are uh, your systems are automatically able to pick up. This has uh, multiple benefits. One, it ensures the immutability of the transaction. And uh, obviously, it removes any manual intervention whatsoever. And when we talk about immutability, and when, once the transaction is authenticated by the authorized by the buyer, the supplier can use that to raise financing. So this is an important uh, emerging industry supply supply chain finance. And uh, we are already seeing uh, cases of this being adopted in the Zoho world. And your ecosystem goes beyond your suppliers, banks, and uh, the tax and the revenue authorities. Today we have transportation and transportation players like Uber, Lyft, or Ola. Uh, when your employees travel on your behalf, right, they are going to spend company's money. Those transactions need to be automatically shown up in your uh, backend systems. Uh, if you are selling, if you are the business of selling goods, products, right, so you need to ensure that your systems are deeply integrated with uh, shippers and couriers. And uh, and they are available on all marketplaces. So we talk about omni-channel commerce. And today it is expected that all your products are available in all the leading marketplaces. And finally, on productivity front, right? So uh, again, finance does not work in silos. So you need to ensure that uh, just like banking transactions can be executed within the finance system, financial transactions are can be executed on any system that the user is comfortable in. For example, expense approval can be done through a bot, through an email, Zoho mail, and then you should be able to approve invoices. So we have to push the envelope on the productivity front and thereby improving the employee experience. So that's about the connected part. Next, we can. I'm going to talk about finance has to be collaborative and continuous in nature. Uh, this pandemic has ensured that we all collaborate remotely, right? So it's uh, uh, pushed us to collaborate. And uh, this uh, today our systems should be designed in such a way that we. Uh, we can run discussions around specific records, specific transactions about anything, assuming that no one is in office, no one is near you. Um, let's take accountants, right? The, much of the discussion with accountants happen at tax time and uh, uh, it happens in a sequential manner. Now, systems, technology is available. The systems have to be in such a way that uh, any discussion can happen on a real-time basis and 
uh, collaborative in nature. Let's take budgeting. So the way budgeting happens today is in a sequential manner. Each department sends their inputs, the finance team sends, uh, the finance team sits and prepares the budget. But what we are looking at is collaborative budgeting. So that makes it iterative and uh, ensure that various inputs are uh, and the feedback loop is continuous and the feedback is incorporated much faster. And all this helps finance team to provide more value added services to various aspects of business. If you're an external accountant, a CA or a CPA, um, these kind of technologies can help you become advisors instead of just stepping in during the tax time. And the other players, right, the customers and vendors can also take advantage of this kind of a collaboration. Uh, you provide self-service portal to your vendors, customers. You can run discussions around specific uh, transactions, uh, helping reduce and it helps to reduce the time to close transaction. And it provides a platform for continuous engagement with all parties. And the most important asset within your organization, the employees, the finance team should ensure that employee experience is also taken care of. Like, uh, how easy are you making your employees to access information that comes from the finance team? Um, if you are, say, your company is providing loans, how easy does your company make the employee avail of the particular loan? So, so basically what we are talking about systematizing the entire collaboration make it much more systemic and accounting beyond being uh, accounting and finance beyond being connected and collaborative has to be continuous in nature so in the past decade right uh, we have seen two major paradigms one is cloud and other is mobile uh, cloud ensures that your data is accessible anywhere and anytime. And uh, so basically the data availability is continuous. Mobile ensures that the IO part, the input, the interaction with the interfaces, uh, you can record any transactions, uh, play with any particular record anywhere, anytime. So these two together have made computing, account, computing continuous. But if you talk to the finance team, especially in uh, uh, larger companies, you still talk about batch processing. I need to set aside some time for flows. So the, when computing is continuous, there's no reason why accounting and finance cannot be continuous. So that's, that's, a, that's one important aspect of a modern finance department. And Finance uh, has to be contextual also. So as I mentioned earlier, the, there's a firehouse of information available within the finance systems. But uh, for much, much of uh, technology history, right, this information was not, companies were not able to utilize properly. But today with integrated systems, data is uh, free to show up in uh, various other systems. It's disseminated to uh, say the front of the systems like for example here the sales guys who live in their CRM built information about the payables receivables the payments from the customer payment information that the customer can avoid selling to delinquent plans furthermore they uh, with the stock information available from inventory systems they can confirm orders without any de delay thereby improving the customer service uh, on the help desk front, you can prioritize support to customers who generate, say, a higher revenue if you want, if that's a part of your business model. To know the revenue, you need access to the finance system. So this is what we call as contextual support. And here's an example of administrative convenience because of uh, integration between HR and finance. As and when a new employee is uh, joins your company, this uh, data is automatically synchronized with your travel and expense system. So the entire workflow is automated. 
and when marketing and finance system talk to each other you can run better from more targeted promotional campaigns uh, say you sell laptops and last year you want to run a promotional campaign selling specific accessories for that laptops for customers who have paid uh, in the stipulated time now you need access to the purchase history and you need uh, how uh, i mean the time to pay for that customer also so this is the kind of integration possibilities uh, uh, that in, that it empowers various departments within the, com the company uh, to perform better so we saw that why finance has to be connected collaborative continuous and contextual finally finance has to be customer driven why uh, we talk about finance can play a much larger strategic role in the company right and who decides the strategy it's ultimately the customer and uh, uh, how do we define customer driven finance it's a operating philosophy where your entire financial systems right they are designed keeping the customer in mind so how do you become one how do you be a customer driven finance function uh, so you need to revisit your uh, processes and technology and see if you have technology that quickens the entire order to cash process uh, that is what we are talking about the various touch points the customer has with the company and ensure that they are completely uh, painless for the customer and from these touch points you are able to glean insights to forecast financial performance and today right a subscription based model is the way to go a lot of companies are adopting this model and uh, instead of focusing on a one off sale the focus is on having a long term relationship with the customer so that being the case do you have systems to automate the payments renewables and drive recurring revenue from the customer and when you go for this model you should uh, the metrics to evaluate your business are a little different and the finance team should get familiarized with a newer kind of metrics of course the traditional metrics are still there but the new metrics like customer profitability lifetime value of a customer need to find a place in your lexicon so with that i have come to the end of the presentation